Imagine that all the continents in our planet Earth are together in one big piece of land where you can easily travel to different places. Will you still see these magnificent views? Hi everyone! Welcome to another episode of our Scientific Friday! I am Teacher Janelle and I'm on a journey to understand the different things around us. Are you ready to join me for today's lesson? Come on and let's see how science is everywhere! Today, we are going to talk about the plate tectonics theory. In this topic, we will discover the following. What is plate tectonics theory? How do tectonic plates move? How does the movement of tectonic plates affect the surface of the Earth? Before proceeding to the theory, let us remember first that Earth has three layers, crust, mantle, and core. Crust and uppermost mantle together form the Earth's lithosphere, a rigid and cool layer that contains breaks called plates. Now, the lithosphere is broken in sections called tectonic plates, which makes the crust look like a puzzle. These plates lie on top of the asthenosphere, a semi-fluid layer in the upper mantle just below the crust and the uppermost mantle. It consists of molten rocks that move slowly and continuously. Imagine a baggage carousel in the airport. The lithosphere is like the baggage. It is solid and does not move on its own. On the other hand, the moving part of the baggage carousel is like the asthenosphere. It carries the baggage which is the lithosphere, as it moves. So, what is plate tectonics theory? In 1965, John Tuzo Wilson, a Canadian scientist, unified the continental drift and the seafloor spreading theories into a single theory called the plate tectonics theory. A while ago, we reviewed that the Earth has lithosphere and a stenosphere, right? Now, this theory states that the Earth's lithosphere, which is made up of plates that lie on top of the asthenosphere, is continuously moving. This movement of plates resulted in formation and destruction of crust, as well as creation of various surface features like trenches, mountains, volcanoes, and volcanic islands. How do plates move? In 1929, Arthur Holmes postulated the convection current theory. This theory states that the plates move because of convection, a process where hot and less dense materials float while cold and denser materials sink. Materials with low density rise because of the heat that comes from the Earth's mantle and core. With this, the hot materials spread out and push the cold materials to sink deeper into the mantle. The sinking of cold materials is cold subduction. This cycle of rising, sinking, and spreading is the reason why tectonic plates move. Do you have an idea how many plates Earth has? Earth has seven major plates and eight minor plates. One of the minor plates is even named after our country, the Philippine Plate. As time passes by, plates change their position due to movement caused by the asthenosphere. These movements cause two or more plates to interact and the areas where they interact are called plate boundaries. 
There are three major kinds of plate boundaries. These are convergent plate boundaries are plate boundaries where two plates crash against each other. Collisions between two oceanic crusts can form island archipelagos and deep ocean trenches. Collisions between an oceanic and continental crust can form volcanoes or volcanic islands. Lastly, collisions between two continental crusts can form mountains. Divergent plate boundaries are plate boundaries that are formed when two plates move away from each other. This causes the formation of oceanic ridges and reef valleys. Transform boundaries are formed when two plates slide past each other. This is also called conservative plate boundary since no cross is destroyed or formed when plates slide past each other. Movements of the different plates are the reason why Earth has different surface features like mountain ranges and deep sea trenches. Earthquakes also occur because of the enormous energy released when plates move and break tensions on huge rocks deep within the earth. Now, let me ask you. Based on your previous knowledge, is the Philippines an archipelago or a peninsula? You are correct. The Philippines is an archipelago. But, do you know how the islands of the Philippines were formed? Let's find out! Because of plate tectonics theory, we now have an idea of how the Philippine archipelago was formed. The continuous movement of plates for millions of years have caused the collision of Philippine, Eurasian, and Indo-Australian plates. The collisions caused the emergence of the islands of the Philippine archipelago. Now, what kind of motion or plate boundary is this? Right, convergent or collision. Because of the movement of plates, the Philippines is rich in surface features, like the beautiful mountain ranges of Sierra Madre, which protect the lowlands of Luzon from harsh typhoons and volcanoes like Mayon and Apo that provide viable mineral deposits and fertile soil. However, we also have dangerous fault lines that creep along the country. These fault lines can cause strong earthquakes, which is why it is always a good thing to be wary of them. Learning about these things will help us become wary of earthquakes since plates move all the time. Now, we can emphasize the importance of the following. First, disaster preparedness protocols. Second, good urban planning to avoid establishment of residential areas near fault lines and volcanic danger zones. And third, proper utilization of volcanic deposits and materials for sustainability. I hope you learned a lot today and apply these learnings in your daily lives. See you again on our next Scientific Friday and together let us discover things around us because science is everywhere. I am Teacher Janelle for Teacher Vival. Goodbye everyone!